Hello there. I'm Mabel Dungeons, and today I'm going to be going over some strategies that can be used in the first tournament map in Guild Wars 2, the Forest of Nifael. Some of this may be very basic to experienced players, but people just going into the tournament scene might get something out of this, so I thought I'd make it. Gameplay footage will be mainly AV8, just so it's easier to capture for me, but this is definitely meant to apply to tournament play, and I have used all this information in tournament play just from my personal experience. I'm gonna first go into the initial strategy and then get into mid to late game play, but before all that, let's look at some basics. The forest has five points of importance. There's the mine, there's the keep, there's the hench. Then there are the two bosses, Svanir and the chieftain. Because the map is pretty symmetrical, I'm gonna name the bosses your boss and enemy boss, and similarly I'm going to name the points your point, the enemy point, and mid. The bosses respawn every 3 minutes and give 30 points plus a buff to whoever team kills them. So when devising an initial strategy you have to look at your team composition and to a limited degree your enemy's team composition as well. Since there are several objectives you can go for in certain classes and roles that are better at each different objective. The first offensive option you have really is to send one or multiple people to go to their boss. If you send one person to do this, their goal should be to steal the boss by killing them at the right time. Due to the nature of this, a bursty power base class will always be better for this role. In my experience, thieves are the best role as they have several abilities which can stop the enemy's attacks on the boss as well as bursting that enemy down. It's kind of funny how the thief is the best stealer, but that is pretty much how it is. However, you can send someone else to do it as long as they have burst damage and enough mobility to get there on time. You could also send multiple people to their boss. If you decide to do this, you're actually starting a team fight there and you should use the boss to your advantage to deal some extra damage to the enemy players. Focus whoever their boss is killing. The next offensive option you have is to send one or more people to the enemy point. If you're going to be sending multiple people, just make sure they work together well. If you're sending one person, it should either be a fast 1v1-er or a bunker. By the way, a bunker is someone that will sit on a point and hold it for a long time even against multiple people. But again, make sure they have the mobility to get there quickly, no matter who you send. And then there's the midpoint. If someone watches this and I'm wrong, please correct me. But from where I see it, there's only two legitimate options you have on the midpoint. You either send zero to the keep and focus on bosses at the start, or you send one bunker class to the keep, preferably a guardian. You could send more people, but it's not really cost effective as pretty much nobody does, and they usually will send either zero, in which case you sending more than one is a waste, or they'll send a bunker which will be able to hold you off if that bunker is good. My rule with this is that if you have a bunker class on your team, send them to mid with the goal of either capping it or holding onto it until your team arrives. Now, I wouldn't send zero to mid unless you actually have zero bunkers on your team. As for your boss, and your point, you basically send the leftovers. You can just leave your boss for later and go full on their side of the map if you want, but if not, have whatever you don't send away go for your own boss. The thing here is that you have to watch out for enemy thieves trying to steal your boss like you might be trying to steal theirs. You can deal with this in a few different ways. To counter stealing, you can try to just burst down the boss before the thief gets there. And that's an option if you're sending maybe four of your whole team to your boss, but otherwise it's not always going to work. There's also the option of having someone try and CC the thief as others finish off your boss. Alternatively, if your boss is still high HP, you can just kill the thief. I'd say in most cases, if you see the enemy team coming in big numbers to your side of the map, you either are going to want to fight them or just get out of there. Finally, your own point. You definitely need to always have someone cap it, as it's three points. As to who does this, 
Well, you have a few options. You can have a bunker cap it and stay on it. You could also have a player cap it and ditch it, which works well enough if your team is mobile and can watch the enemy team movements well. There's a third way though, which is kind of unique to Mesmers. A Mesmer can sort of be two places at once like this. They can drop a portal near your point, go up to keep and help the fight there a bit, and then portal right back. Thieves and Necros can do this to a limited degree, but it's simply not nearly as reliable and not quite so good at 1v1 combat. So with that said, I would say 99% of the time you want to have a Mesmer if you have one at all on that point. So I've said a lot of words. How do they all translate into a winning opening strategy? Well, look at your team. First off, how many bunkers or extremely tanky players do you have? I'm not going to condemn any kind of team comp here. If you have one, you should probably send them to keep. If you have two, you send the second one to their point if they're at all mobile, and if not, have them sit on your point. More than two and you're a pretty damn annoying team, so send some bunkers everywhere. Send a bunker to all three points and have fun. If you have zero bunkers, that's fine too. You're gonna have a really offensive team and you'll just have to play well. Now, of all the players left, do you have a Mesmer? If so, they're probably perfect for guarding your point and playing with portals. Now, whoever's left, do you have a good bursty player? If so, you can send them to steal their boss. Do you have an extra player who is good at 1v1? You can send them to the enemy point. Anyone left at this point can go to your boss, or if they're not confident enough, they can help out on the enemy side of the field. And now you have an opening strat. There's some other crazy stuff which you can do too, but it's not reliable and what I've said is pretty much all you really need for the basics. After that very beginning of the game, which is reliant on boss kills and such, there's almost always going to be a fight over the keep. Anyone who was killing bosses before will usually go straight to keep, one team will win the fight there, and the other will either manage to take the enemy point or start the match at a disadvantage. Whatever the case, whether you win or lose that first 100 or so points, the mid game has begun. What you do now, again really depends on your team comp and is based on a spectrum. Say you have a fully defensive team, all five of your players are pretty tanky and have a lot of CC, but very mediocre damage. In this case, you're pretty good at holding points, but you're going to have a hard time getting them in the first place. So it's vital for a team like this, once they only get two points, to hold onto them for the entire game, whatever it takes. On the other hand, say your team is offensive. Your whole team, all five, are glass cannons. In this case, you can get points pretty easily, but over time you will not be able to reliably hold points in any way, shape, or form. For a team like this, it's absolutely vital to be constantly attacking the enemy points with a majority of your team. Now most teams will be somewhere in between these two extremes. You want your defensive players to be defending points, your offensive players to be attacking points, and killing bosses. The more offensive your team is, the more you should be pressuring their side. The more defensive it is, the more you should be sticking to your side and to holding on to mid. Of course, there's players who are more balanced as well, and these are players who should be making sure they have enough mobility to roam, as they'll be needed both in offense and in defense. Something else to note is that your team should be keeping track of when bosses are going to be up. When the bosses are down, your offensive players should be assaulting points, but when they're close to up, your players should be near and ready to kill them. Now don't take any of what I said as the perfect truth or anything, it's based on my experiences and you should experiment with your own stuff as much as you'd like. But keeping this stuff in mind when strategizing is going to make you a lot more effective than just simple zerking. Use this advice when starting out playing tourneys or to try and bring a pug team to victory. If this helped you in any way, please let me know. If not, if everything I've said is dumb, then let me know that too. If people like this and like to see more, I will do the same kind of thing for the other two tournament maps sometime next week. For more content like this, you can subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching guys. I've been Maple Dungeons, and I'll see you next time.